My name is Charlie Murphy and I'm presenting a project called Brains in a Dish which I've been working on for the last three years and this has been inspired by a collaboration with a, a molecular neuroscientist who's looking at dementia. So we'll just get it started now. So you should feel a bit of pressure, but hopefully not much more than that. If it is, so let me know. How deep does it go? Just about half a centimetre. Right. Far down in the skin so that you get as many fibroblasts as possible. They're the ones that we're interested in. You know, eventually it's come out very easily. What's the name that you made of? So it's made of... Um, so there's some glucose in there, there's various um, growth factors. Um, My name's Selena Ray, I'm a research scientist working on Alzheimer's disease using brain cells or neurons that we can grow from stem cells. So I've been collaborating with Charlie on the Brains in a Dish project for the past three years together with Chris Lovejoy from my lab. And I've been watching the transformation of these skin cells into functioning brain cells that have been grown in a dish. portion of your biopsy mm. and you can see that there's biops, uh, fibroblasts have started. So there you can see oh. we've got a lot of cells coming out of here yeah. the skin which is normally much more proliferative. Mm. We've got the fibroblast down here, see? Mm. So this is a biopsy. Oh, okay. There's epithelials. Mm -hmm. So again, a homologous uh, culture. We're after just fibros, just okay. fibroblasts. Um, so that's where you keep We'll, uh, at some point we'll put all our episodes in and, and transform them, transform them into our hissing cells. The other thing is that has come out of this project is it really forces you to think quite deeply about the work that we do in ways that we we might not in our day-to-day -day life. So really we're growing brain cells in a, in a dish and as Charlie says this is the stuff of thought. Now to us in our day-to-day -day job these are really tools that we use to answer research questions about what's going wrong with those cells in Alzheimer's disease. But actually when you start to think about what these cells are capable of when they are in the setting of the human brain, it really reminds you of how remarkable it is that we're able to work with these in the lab. One more? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the nuclei in the ball. Yeah. And then all the... And all the axons or processes. All kind of radiating out. All exactly. Yeah. And then you can see the layer of nuclei in there and all the, all oh. the processes.
starting with just a small piece of someone's skin, we could grow these cells potentially from anyone. And I think it does make you think quite deeply about the, the ethics of that, about consent, about making sure that the people who are participating in our research fully understand what we are trying to achieve by asking them to undergo these procedures, but also making sure that when we communicate our research to the public, we, we have a responsibility to show them that we're performing this work in a responsible way. like the glass sculptures that Charlie has developed in response to our cells and the images that she's seen. First of all, because they're just very beautiful, but also on a deeper level, I feel like they really capture the fragility and the delicateness of the cells that we're growing and also how fragile they are in our brain. These are highly, highly specialised, intricate um, cells and it's easy to see when you kind of represent them as a delicate glass sculpture how susceptible they are to things going wrong, which is really what I'm interested in, what happens when things go wrong. The work that we're doing is really quite beautiful in many ways and a formal setting might not reach all of the people who would like to know about the work that we do. So really through creating these different artworks and seeing how Charlie responds to the work that we're doing. It's really made us think about things in a completely different way.